Greetings all, this is Dickie Adams with PocketNow.com and today we're taking a closer look at the software on the Verizon LG Revolution. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Starting from when you power up the device, you can see the Verizon slide to unlock uh, configuration here. We've got pretty typical home screen configuration with widgets that come default. You can move them around as expected. There is a little bit of a difference. Um, it creates this grid of items and when you want to add widgets they actually appear down here. Uh, you can add shortcuts and wallpapers uh, as well. Back completely out of there. You may notice that there's a lot of screen space taken up here with the dot indicators and the reason for that, if we go in here to the phone app make a phone call and go to the home screen then you can see how the phone call uh, overlay appears up at the top here taking up that space and though the dots are no longer there it's interesting and it's convenient from the aspect of not having to flip the um, notifier down in order to be able to switch back to the current call but when it's not in place the fact that it takes up so much screen space is a little annoying the Verizon Navigator and the Bing Maps do work just fine, but they seem to work in a very typical Verizon uh, overlay fashion. Compared to the Google Maps, uh, we found that it didn't work nearly as well. Interestingly enough, though, in the app list, and this is the app tray, app drawer that is used by uh, the LG Revolution, uh, if you go down here to the bottom, you can see I actually had to install Google Maps on the device. Now, you, thankfully, you can install it, but it didn't come default. The Google Navigation, Google Places, Latitude, and Maps all had to be installed after the fact. Google, uh, the Verizon did not include them by default. Speaking of the app tray, everything is broken up into little sections. We have communication, and then news and search, media, and then tools applications are this one was actually uh, a zero it was actually up here in the media until I just updated it and then these are all the apps that I've downloaded it's pretty simple to manage the categories and move these around but I wanted to make sure that you saw how when you download a new app where those actually go they don't by default move into the categories which would be make it more interesting uh, as it stands it's a little funny to navigate around especially if you're used to any other app drawer this device is running Froyo it's not running uh, gingerbread which is a little bit of a disappointment considering it's a brand new device and because of that this skin here uh, does have a tendency to lag uh, as you saw before when we opened up the phone call just a few minutes ago it took a few seconds for that to launch. If you pull the bar down, then it has a Verizon LG based uh, launcher here to turn on airplane mode, the GPS, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and toggle the vibration on and off, and then it's just standard notifications here. As you can see, the scrolling is just fine. Little has a tendency to snag up unsurprisingly uh, using the default browser now I'm pressing the home button here you can't see that but it took a couple of taps for it to actually rack and this is a typical thing about this device as we mentioned the hardware swiping and tapping sometimes doesn't react uh, as it should or what as one would expect on the device messaging is about the same as expected one of the problems I have with a Verizon, this Verizon based phone, is that the number of apps that are included on here that you can't get rid of that are not actually full apps. Let's Golf, Rock Band, um, Slacker, Rock, uh, or I'm sure Rock Band, Blockbuster, uh, you can't get rid of these even though they're on the device and they aren't the full versions of these apps. The Let's Golf is a demo, Rock Band is a demo, and if you're going to put demos on the device, frankly, you should be able to delete them. Other items of note on this device 
are Polaris Office to view your Office apps, the um, Tune Wiki that comes on it by default uh, for look, looking for music and listening to streaming music. Amazon Kindle comes on default, Netflix comes on default. Now let's talk about Netflix for just a moment. Did some tests with this compared to the Galaxy S4G and the Netflix, when streaming at the exact same time for the exact same account, exact same movie, the Netflix on this device would seem to stutter and act choppy, although the audio always stayed very clean and smooth versus the Nexus S4G from Sprint which the video was very smooth the entire time, no glitchiness on either audio or video. And as we mentioned in the hardware review, the screen didn't look nearly as good. Uh, since we talked about speed tests last time, we didn't get a chance to really look at results uh, because I wanted to make sure that we showed off some LTE speeds. Uh, this was up in Seattle here, when you see we got 10 and the nine, averaging about about 10 uh, across the board. If we move down here, this bottom section here was back in my home service area, about one, and then in the basement here, 158 of my office, 129, 151, so some, some pretty miserable speeds uh, in this area, um, out and about in the uh, daylight, then we got a little better speeds, and then being up in the uh, Seattle area, you can see that I was getting a lot better speeds once the LTE kicked in. I want to show you one particular disturbing thing about the uh, Bing integration that comes on this device. Uh, as expected, you, you would have to expect some some sort of uh, EULA before you could actually use the software, which is fine. But if we go in here and it launches the app and it says you need to view this service agreement, most of us would just skip over it. But let's say you wanted to view it. What comes up is this. And if you say view on PC site, what you get is this again and again and again. So you can't actually view the service agreement uh, that it's ask, asking you to accept in order to be able to use Bing. If you hit the search button, again, you have to agree to the location services and the service agreement, which you can't actually see on the device, in order to be able to use Bing on here. I'm going to head and accept it for the purposes of demonstrating it uh, so you can see that it comes up here. One interesting item to note in the settings, which is pretty default for Froyo, if we go into the wireless and networks, then into mobile networks, and then system select, you can see here, you can choose to enable LTE CDMA or CDMA only. If you choose to make a change to either one of these, the device actually has to reboot in order for it to be able to switch. So if you're not in an LTE area and you want to save on some battery, you actually have to reboot your device, causing more battery loss than just being able to toggle the LTE 4G service on and on or on and off. Frankly, I found the Verizon LG Revolution software to be about the same as the hardware, yet another disappointment stacked upon another disappointment. Even though there were some things that worked well on the whole, it just doesn't seem to be a device that I would still recommend to people, especially at this price point that they're currently selling it for, at the time of this review anyway. If it was sub $100 for this large of a screen, and the average battery life, then maybe, maybe you could consider it. But at the price they're wanting to ask for it right now, it just doesn't seem worth the you know disappointing color and the screen, the battery life only be ending up about six hours, uh, the forced being the X apps you can't remove, etc., etc., etc. And that about wraps up our software review of the Verizon LG Revolution. If you have any questions that you would like to see addressed on the final review, drop us a note below. Thanks for watching.